everybody. Welcome to the chapter 11.1 video tutorial. In this, this video tutorial I'm going to be talking about the work of Gregor Mendel and it's going to cover all the key terminology and ideas that you will encounter in chapter 11.1. So let's get this started. So first off, Gregor Mendel had a question. He wanted to know why is it that every single organism is unique in some way? Because if you look around the world, you never see two identical life forms. You just don't. You always see little differences between individuals. You see differences between you and your brothers, you and your dad. There's always small differences, even though you do have some similarities. Genetics is the attempt to answer this question. Genetics' goal is to figure out why every single person is unique in some way. Now, we call this the study of heredity. Heredity is just a fancy way of saying how traits, how what you are, gets passed down from parents to offspring and from parents to offspring. And essentially, it's a fancy way of saying why organisms are unique. Now, the main guy in this, the first person to really put together what was going on in genetics was, a good old, was an old monk named Gregor Mendel. Um, he essentially used pea plants to study this idea. And pea plants were an excellent choice because they are easy to breed and cultivate. And in some sense, he got lucky. As you'll learn in chapter 11.3, if he had chose a different organism other than pea plants, he may not have been able to come to the conclusion he did. Okay, so first off, let's talk about making babies. Fertilization. Fertilization is a fancy way of saying when a sperm cell and an egg cell come together to create a new organism. Um, it's pretty simple. This new cell is oftentimes called an embryo so when a sp sperm cell and an egg cell combined the result is an embryo now this is pretty obvious to most people every single child is unique in some way this difference from one child to the next is basically what a trait is um, a trait is something that you see that's different from one individual to the next individual. So a good example of this would be like blue eyes. Blue eyes is a trait. Brown eyes is a trait. Um, hair color is a trait. Skin color is a trait. Your height is a trait. Anything about you is a trait. And traits tend to vary from person to person. And genetics is the attempt to figure out how these traits come about. Now, the book calls it a specific characteristic. Um, just understand, when it says a specific characteristic, it's really just saying the same thing here. Is that it's something that's different from one child to the next. Um, true breeding. The book does not have this as one of your key terms, but frankly speaking, if you don't understand, if you don't understand true breeding, you're not going to understand this chapter and why it works the way it does. True breeding is basically a fancy way of saying that he made sure that when a plant fertilized itself, it created an identical plant. And I'll try to explain a little bit later why that was important. But essentially what this does is that it makes sure that the plants, when they were fertilized with themselves, never gave different offspring. There was never any kind of variation involved. This would give Mendel some kind of a baseline to compare everything to. And as I put here, it makes sure you know what kind of plant you're going to get. Now, a hybrid. A hybrid is a lot of things, but the basic way to look at it is that a hybrid is a child of parents with different traits. This definition is so, it's so broad, it's so big, that it basically accompanies almost every single organism. You are a hybrid of your mom and your dad. Uh, oftentimes, babies from, diff from parents of different races, somebody who's Asian and somebody who's African-American, for example, would be considered an Asian-African-American hybrid. But 
hybrids even go more specific than that and the fact that like for me I am a hybrid of my mom and my dad and you guys are hybrids of your parents so hybrid is kind of a broad term you'll learn later on it's not really used that way very often just understand that a hybrid is the child of parents who have different traits oh one more that's interesting is that a lion and a tiger baby is called a liger. That one I thought you guys would be interested in. I talked about it a little bit in class. Okay, here's what Mendel did. Mendel took true breeding pea plants of different types and made them have babies. Making them have babies is a fancy way of saying he crossed them. So whenever I say I crossed this plant with this plant or this kid with this kid, all I'm really saying is, is that I made them have babies. So that's what he did. He took true breeding plants and had them have babies. And what he discovered when he did this is that some traits were being passed along. Something was being passed along from parent to child. He wasn't really sure what it was. It was the math that really helped him here. These things that were being passed along, we call them genes. And genes are just something being passed along from mom to dad. Now, the next concept from this chapter is alleles. Um, every single time a mom and a dad have a baby, two genes are passed. Two genes basically being two different programs um, from parent to child. He goes, we call these different forms of a gene alleles. So say, for example, you have a gene that makes you tall. And say your dad has a gene that makes somebody tall, and your mom has a gene that makes somebody short. Or it's even possible for your dad to, say, have a gene for tallness and a gene for shortness. We call different forms of alleles, different, sorry, different forms of genes alleles. So this is that big A, little a concept I was talking about in class sometimes. All that an allele is, is an allele is a gene for a different trait. We have two alleles for everything. Every single trait we have has at least two alleles. Um, and you guys have already seen that before with the Punnett squares we've talked about. Okay, the principle of dominance. The principle of dominance is basically this. If you have one dominant allele for a trait, you will have that trait. Oftentimes we signify that as like a capital letter, but it's really up to you how you want to represent it. Um, so, as I said, we'll word, call it a dominant trait. A recessive trait is something that in order for you to have that trait, you have to have both alleles of it. Um, so you need to have two alleles in order to have a recessive trait. You just have to have one of the alleles to have a dominant trait. So I want to talk a little bit about what Mendel saw when he was doing his research. So what Mendel did was this. He took a tall plant that was true breeding, meaning that if he took this tall plant and bred it with another tall plant, it would always give him that a tall plant. And he made it have a baby with a short plant. When that happened, he got a tall plant and a tall plant. So he then took this group here, which he called a fancy term, the F1 generation, and he made them have kids. When they had babies, he discovered that he got this particular grouping. He got a tall plant, a tall plant, a tall plant, and a short plant. So he got a three to one ratio. He got three tall plants to one short plant. Now, I couldn't get a good graphic for this, so you're going to have to kind of pay attention very closely to what happened here. What he then did was, as he would then cross these tall plants and these short plants together in different combinations, and what he discovered was, is, is that these two plants right here had an allele for tall and an allele for short. He discovered this plant right here had two alleles for the tall gene. And he discovered that this plant right here had two alleles for the short gene. Um, I'll give some more examples later on about this, but I have covered this in class, so hopefully you kind of understand why that is. I will attempt to go into more detail later. So, I wanted to talk a little bit about gametes and what they were, and I thought this image here I found on the internet was probably the best way to see it visually.
All a gamete is, is a gamete is a sperm cell or an egg cell from an organism. Now, think of this cell right here as a normal everyday cell. This could be a skin cell, this could be a heart cell, this could be a brain cell. These cells are always going to have two copies of every single allele. So you have two copies of an allele here, two copies of an allele here. Now when you form a gamete, a gamete is a sperm cell or an egg cell, one of those T's is going to jump into the sperm cell or the egg cell. And what ends up happening is, is that when the sperm cell and the egg cell come together, you end up getting this embryo, this fertilized egg, that is a big T, little t. What Gregor Mendel then did was, as he took the offspring of these parents right here, one of which had a big T, one of which had a little t, and he got this ratio here, this grouping. You probably see, guys, this looks a lot like a Punnett square, and we've talked about those in class. What this showed is that the gametes, he had a big T in this situation, he had a small T going here, a big T and a small T. What this showed is, is that the gametes separated individually. So one T goes here, one T goes here, one T goes here, one T goes here. So when you have two alleles, they separate and become one allele when they're inside of a sperm cell or an egg cell. When they fertilize, they then combine together. This is a basic Punnett square, as you guys have seen. So you have a big T, a big T, a little T, a big T, a big T, a little T, and a little T, and a little T. This idea that gametes separate individually, like I mentioned here, that's called segregation. Segregation is just the idea that alleles are separate from one another. So, if you have a gene for tall and a gene for short, they move separately and not together. So, in an actual cell, it would be a big T and a little t. But when it turns into a sperm cell or an egg cell, one cell gets a big T and one cell gets a little t. These cells that have either one, have one allele or the other are called gametes. And these are cells with only one allele as I've said a couple times already. I'm hoping to hammer that idea into you guys because it's really important to understand how that works. Normal cells have two alleles, gametes have one allele. And that's pretty much it, guys. I know it's a lot of content, but I put this onto a video so you guys can pause, look back, and hopefully go back and try to understand ideas you didn't, under, you didn't quite get the first time. So thank you for taking the time to watch this, and I hope you guys have an excellent day.